Playing through Halo 3 with only melee attacks was a surprisingly quick and easy going experience for the most part. So for this week's video I wanted to try something that's more difficult and probably a lot more tedious. Today I want to find out, can you beat Oblivion without killing anything? Honestly? No. At least I don't think so, as I already can think of two mandatory segments of the main story in which I will need to defeat multiple enemies. But who knows, maybe I'm wrong, and regardless I want to see how far I could possibly get. I've already attended this challenge in Oblivion's sequel Skyrim, so for anyone who saw that video the rules are fairly similar. And the rules are... I cannot attack or kill any person or creature in the game, there are no exceptions to this rule. No using followers that aren't a part of quests in the story, so I can't for talking sake go out of my way to get a follower from a side quest and then bring them along to fight for me. I can only use restoration spells that heal me. I'm not allowed to use restoration spells that damage or drain abilities from other people. And with that, let's get started. When choosing a race, I decided to go with a wood elf. I didn't do any research into what race started with the best stat bonuses that would help me out the most. I literally only picked the Wood Elf as I assumed their incredibly small size would mean I would have a smaller hitbox and therefore make it easier to dodge attacks, but I have no idea whether that is even true or not. I also spent far too long making all kinds of abominations with Oblivion's relatively broken character creator. In the end, I settled on this monstrosity and named him Bert. This is because I think he looks like what would happen if the Muppet from Sesame Street caught on fire. I take a moment trying to adjust to the somewhat new controls. See, I've never played Oblivion on PC before, I've only ever played it on the 360, so for my own sake I'm using an Xbox One controller for most of the gameplay, but I have to use the mouse when navigating my inventory. Just thought I would get that out of the way in case there ever looks like there's a point where I'm just staring into nothing while trying to figure something out. <laughs> anyway, I meet Patrick Stewart and he tells me that he has seen me before in his nightmares, and that we can escape the prison through my cell, so we do just that. During the first encounter with the Mythic Dawn I have a nice chat with one of them about farms and the Nibine, while the Blades murder the rest of them. As soon as they leave, I make my way through the new hole that miraculously appeared, and do my best to avoid the rats as to not take too much damage this early on. There isn't a whole lot to talk about in this opening segment, so I'll skip on a little bit. When we meet back up with the Emperor, we get to choose our star sign. I take the steed for the added 20 points in my speed right off the bat. My strategy is, if I can't fight anyone, I might as well be able to outrun them. One more uneventful encounter with the Mythic Dawn later, and the Emperor gives us his amulet and dies. Even though we could have clearly jumped in and stopped the assassin, Ah well, anyway, now we get to choose our class. I just make a custom class and focus on skills like acrobatics and athletics to help me avoid any unnecessary encounters. And with that we are out of the sewers and we can head straight for Wayne and Priory to properly get things started. I get some assistance from Joffrey in the form of some leather armour and they made my way straight for Kvatch. Once I was just outside Kvatch, I just headed straight into the Oblivion Gate without a care in the world. I briefly considered waiting until Hand had dealt with the scamps and then have him accompany me through the gate, but seeing how two stunted scamps nearly killed him, I doubt he will last very long and just headed onwards without him. Dodging the scamps' fireballs were trivial, as they are fairly slow projectiles. What nearly got me was the fact that the Daedra seemed to have bouncing baddies all over the place, which inflict both fire damage and mental damage as it made me think about World at War Online. And I don't want to think about World at War Online. Something odd I noticed before going into the first tower was that there was a Dramor that had been killed by his own scamp. At least, that's what I think happened, as I found the scamp down over his corpse. What I'm guessing has happened is that the Dramora accidentally hit the scamp with either a spell or an arrow, and that caused the scamp to become hostile to him. If that is the case, that gives me an idea of how to get through some later encounters. Inside the tower, the Dramora and scamps are easy enough to slip past, but then we hit a point where you need a key to proceed, which is held by a Dramora in the next tower over. I was worried that this might have been the end of the run already, as you can't steal the key from him if he is aggro, which they all are at this point, <laughs> and I obviously can't kill him. Luckily, however, after a few attempts I was able to get him to try and attack me and miss, which caused him to fall down to the bottom floor and die thankfully, allowing me to grab the key with little resistance. I also took his heart for good measure. From here I just made sure to get my health back by waiting, then made my way to the top of the tower and took the sigil stone. I briefly considered safe scumming until I got the stone with the chameleon enchantment, but at this point I didn't want to abuse the game with too many exploits. At this point, more on that later. <laughs> Once we all make it into the town, most of the guards get slaughtered by the Daedra, not surprising really, one of them even hits me with an arrow. I mean, I know I'm ugly guys, but come on, that's just rude. One good thing about all the guards dropping like flies is that now I have a somewhat decent set of armour. I thought maybe the helmet would have been normal, but it seems to have been moulded to Bert's exact measurements. Gross. Inside the chapel I explain everything to Sean Bean, and that he is secretly Patrick Stewart's son, and then he agrees to come with me to see Joffrey. When we get back to Wayne on Priory, the Mythic Dawn have already taken the amulet, probably because we have another couple of hours of gameplay to fulfil. So with that, we all head to Cloud Ruler Temple and Martin gets greeted by the Blades while I test out my acrobatics on the roof. We are then told to go to the Imperial City to help Boris with his investigation, and by help, I mean we go around getting information on books while Boris drinks his sorrows away. 
You may think I'm skipping over a lot, but I am really not. How this all goes is Boris kills somebody, we find out he has one of the Mythic Dawn commentaries, and then it's just a matter of talking to this Argonian lady, then threatening this wood elf to get three of the four books. The last book is where things start to get a bit more interesting again. Turns out the last book can only be retrieved from members of the Mythic Dawn, so me and Boris need to head down into the sewers and get them from there. Thing is, as of this point on, Boris isn't essential anymore. This means he can die down in the sewers, and if that happens, then I don't have any way to get the book. So I spend a little time selling my useless items to try and get enough gold to buy a spell that will let me heal others, but shockingly I couldn't find anyone who was selling one. I even tried the Anvil Mages Guild who are supposed to specialise in restoration magic, and they did not have one. Now that I basically have no other options, I decided to just head into the sewers and hope for the best. Turns out I was worried for nothing however, as they aren't hostile initially, meaning I can just steal the book off of them and be on my way. I even tried sitting down as instructed after stealing the book to see what would happen, but they clearly did not expect you to do it this way, as nothing happens. Whatever, I leave the sewers and have the Argoni woman decipher its message, which requires two in-game days of waiting, before finding out the location of the Mythic Dawn's base. When at the hideout, I offer to give over all of my items so I can go in peacefully. I may not be able to get them back, but honestly, that won't be too big of a loss as the only things of worth are my health potions, which I can easily find more of. Once I got into the main room, I assumed I would have been attacked when I stood next to Mike or Cameron, but nothing happened. At this point I was wondering if I should wait until he left or just grab the book now. I opted for the latter and grabbed the book, but of course doing this makes everyone else in the hideout hostile towards you. Ironically, since I gave them all of my stuff, I was now able to run a lot faster, which certainly helped get past the majority of them. However, it also meant I had no armour and had to rely on the default healing spell if I got injured. Well, as you can imagine, I didn't last long before one of the Mythic Dons sniped me out of the air with his magic. This is when I relearned the hard way that Oblivion does not autosave as much as future Bethesda games, meaning I was back before I handed over my items. So this time I just opted to tell the guards where they can shove it and began sprinting my way to the main chamber to grab the book again. This time things actually go a lot better, mainly because I've got armour, healing potions, and an idea of where I need to go. Thankfully I was able to get out this time, even got lucky enough that some of the Mythic Dawn accidentally killed their own men, which was great. <laughs> Once out of that hellhole, I made my way back to Martin and gave him the book I got from the Mythic Dawn. He was... less than thrilled. BY THE NINE! Joffrey then tasked me with taking out some spies that had been seen just down the mountain. Obviously, I cannot kill them. But there is no rule about dangling a metaphorical carrot in front of their noses and leading them straight to the town guards. Once that's done, I take the key off of the body and use it to find plans inside Gerald's house. And be done with the mission. Or at least, that's what is meant to happen. Turns out I missed one of the spies, so I had to go back down and get her to follow me up to Cloud Ruler Temple, where the blades give her a warm welcome. The next part of the story requires you to get a Daedric artifact for Martin. Now usually most people will do the Azura Star quest, as it's the one that gets marked on your map for this, as well as having a low level requirement and generally being a pretty short and easy quest. Of course though, this quest requires you to kill a bunch of vampires, and as far as I'm aware, I can't just lure them outside or throw cloves of garlic at them, so instead I decide that I'll have to do Sher Gorath's quest. It's the only one I can do at my current level of 2 that doesn't require me to engage in any combat. I need a head of lettuce, a lesser soul gem, and some yarn. Because why not? Now usually the yarn, from my experience anyway, is the most annoying to find, but I ended up finding it in the first container I checked in the Imperial City. I also found a paintbrush, which I took for later. Again, more on that in a bit. Yes? Hey you. Hi! Greetings to you. I've killed far worse than you. Hi there. Hello. Anyway, I bought a head of lettuce from the feed bag, and then had a bit of trouble trying to get a lesser soul gem, as the only one I could find I would have to steal from the Mystic Emporium, which wouldn't be very Sesame Street of me. But that hurts hardcore now. Once I deliver the items to the shrine, I need to head to Border Watch and find out how to mess with some Khajiit there. It's easy enough, all you have to do is steal the cheese from the inn and cook it which causes rats to appear, and then use the rat poison that the elder leaves behind to poison the sheep. But of course, this is Oblivion, so nothing works how it's supposed to. When I'm waiting for the rats to arrive, this random conjurer appeared to try and kill me. I'm pretty sure he's part of the Spell Tomes DLC I have. Thing is, I can't fight back, and I assumed the village elder would take care of him, but instead, he went invisible and just started running away. So I gave chase because I needed to talk to him, otherwise I wouldn't be able to progress the quest. This chase went on for about 5 minutes before I decided to just load back and start the quest over. Second time around everything goes exactly how it's supposed to. I cook the cheese, the rats appear, I get the rat poison and then I poison the sheep, and then the sky rains down with flaming dogs. Because of course. So after all that, I get the Wabajack, I can take it back to Martin, and he can destroy it, and I can be on to the next part of the story. Next up is the Oblivion Gate outside of Bruma, and it was so unbelievably simple because of Captain Bird who does so much damage and just can't die, so I just let him distract Daedra while I make my way to the top and grab the sigil stone to close the gate. 
The game also crashes at this point, but what else is new? This is the fourth time in this run, by the way, that this has happened. I've just played so many Bethesda RPGs over the years, I've just grown numb to them crashing all the time. Okay, so remember at the beginning of the video when I mentioned that there are two mandatory fights? Well, we are now at the first one in Sanquator. Or to be more specific, we have four fights in Sanquator that we must engage in to move on with the game. For anyone who has never played Oblivion, basically there are four skeletons that we have to kill in here to get past. In a normal run, it's a pretty easy mission. You just walk in, kill them, grab the item you need, and leave. But for this run, it is a massive, tedious time sink. Remember the Scamp and the Dremor from the first Oblivion Gate and how they turned on each other and could damage each other? Well, in Sangrator, there are also ghosts who will use pretty low damaging frost spells, and if I get incredibly lucky, I can get them to hit the skeletons. Now, unlike the Scamps though, they will never, ever turn on each other. So what I effectively have to do is dance around these skeletons like an idiot until the ghost's magic kills them. Let's not waste everyone's time, this is the worst and most tedious thing I have ever done for one of these runs. Yes, even more tedious than the AA gun in the melee only Halo 3 challenge. The ghosts did so little damage and attacked so infrequently that it took about 20 minutes per skeleton, if I was lucky. So I'm not going to talk about every fight individually as I would just end up repeating myself four times over and just let the sped up footage that's playing speak for itself. Once it was finally over and I got the armor and I left, I couldn't even fast travel back to Cloud Roller Temple as I was being chased by a wolf, and then two wolves, and then three wolves. So I ended up having to run all the way back to the temple where thankfully the blades dealt with the wolves. It's starting to get pretty crowded up here with all these bodies now. Once we give the armor to Martin, as is this entire story, we are sent on another fetch quest to get the Great Wilkins Stone from the Miss Cargan. One good thing about Sangrator was I used so many restoration spells and increased my light armor so much that I was able to level up from level 2 all the way to level 6, which meant I now had a speed of 94. In other words, I can outrun just about any land animal at this point. Once at Miss Cargan, as mentioned, I am so fast at this point that I can just blitz on past everyone and everything inside the ruin. That said, the skeletons and zombies are too preoccupied with the goblins to attack me, so it all works out. Thanks to our ungodly speed, it doesn't take long until I grab the stone and come face to face with what is meant to be the sort of boss of the ruins, the aptly named King of Miscargand. Ah yes, very original. Just how do you do it, Todd? <laughs> Thankfully, he isn't that tough. And also isn't required to kill as all he drops is the key to the door out, but it can be picked easy enough and from there it's just retracing your steps until you get back outside. Now when we return to Martin, it's time to repair for the Great Gate Assault on Bruma. It's not really that important, but I'll mention that I didn't bother getting any aid for Bruma, as for my own previous playthroughs it doesn't really do anything as you still have plenty of soldiers made up by the Bruma Militia as well as Boris, Joffrey and Captain Bird. When inside the chapel waiting for Martin to arrive, I accidentally spoke to one of the guards and he tries to arrest me. I'm guessing this is for the soul gem that I stole earlier. It's not a big deal though, so I just pay the fine, but it's when I pay the fine that something strange happens. So yeah, the King of Miscargand and his posse followed me all the way to Bruma apparently. <laughs> Enemies in Oblivion are relentless. Luckily for me though, Martin, Joffrey, Boris and Bird were all walking past and stopped to help fight them. Well, Martin didn't. He just kind of pulled out his dagger and slowly walked away. Anyway, once the King is dead, I return to the chapel and get the Great Gate quest underway. The battle itself isn't too bad, I just make sure to stay healed. I was actually more worried about Martin because if he dies here I need to load back, but that never happened as the militia did a great job of protecting him. Once the Great Gate spawned, I immediately ran inside as I remembered this mission is on some sort of time limit from this point on. When I was younger, I always remember this bit being really difficult, but all you have to do is climb up one of the towers and open the gates to the main tower. That said, the Siege Machine did one-shot me at one point with what may be the loudest attack in existence. Once the gate to the main tower with the Great Sigil Stone is open, it's over very shortly as there are no real twists or turns or keys needed for hard locks, so it's just a straight shot of running up the stairs until you grab the stone. And with that, the great gate is finished. When outside, Martin congratulates me on a job well done, and that now we can finally open the portal to Minecraft Cameron's paradise and retrieve the amulet of- Yes, hello Boris, nice to see you. This is where things get dire. Paradise itself is relatively easy, as you can just run past all the Mythic Dawn and the few Dremora here. What's really difficult is the fight with Cameron. He is an incredibly powerful wizard with strong summons, and he has his two children with him, one who always uses lots of magic, and another who will rush you down and fight you head on. This makes for a fairly difficult encounter, to say the least, topped with the fact I can't fight back and it's nearly impossible. I say nearly impossible as I do have Eldemil to back me up and he can fight Cameron, but the thing is, 
He is just awful. He has no armor to speak of, meaning Cameron's summons kill him almost immediately, and his spiels do very little damage, and his dagger even less so. But he is also immortal in that after he dies, if you wait a few minutes, he will return to the fight. So theoretically, given enough time and respawns, Eldamil would indeed be able to kill Cameron. But that's just it. It's theoretical. As I tried this a number of times and it just never worked, sometimes as soon as he would spawn in, he would either be killed by Cameron or his children, or even worse, he would fight Cameron's children instead and they also respawn. So if that happened, I basically had to reset the fight. After throwing myself at this fight for over an hour, I decided that I couldn't do it and that I couldn't beat Oblivion without killing anything. Traditionally. I couldn't beat Oblivion without killing anything. Traditionally. That's right, I have a loophole. Strap in everyone, if you've never played Oblivion before, things are about to get really weird really fast. So I load back to a save right before I went to Paradise and fast travel back to the Imperial City and go to the Mystic Emporium to buy scrolls. I buy one Commanding Touch scroll and three Open Easy Lock scrolls. Now, I head outside and what I do is I want to click and select the scrolls I have multiple of. So in this case, the three open easy lock scrolls. And once I have selected them, I want to click on them again, or just double click on them in the first place. And then I want to drop the commanding touch scroll. And there we go. Now I have three commanding touch scrolls. That's right, it's a duplication glitch. But you're probably wondering, what does duplicated scrolls do for me? Well, on their own, nothing. Oh, but just you wait. <laughs> So I continue to duplicate my scrolls until I have one bundle of 18 scrolls. And then what I want to do is drop the paintbrush we grabbed way back when doing the Wabajack quest. I told you all it might come into play later. Now, the reason we are duplicating the paintbrush is because like a lot of things in this game, paintbrushes do not act how they are supposed to. For some unknown reason to me, they have no physics, meaning when you drop one, it just floats in midair. But that's not all. They are also completely solid objects, which means we can stand on them, and since we can duplicate as many as we want, we can effectively make a stairway to climb just about anything. What we want to do with what is essentially a portable ladder I am carrying around in Bert's butt cheeks, is to go over to the temple district in the Imperial City and use them to make a path onto one of the buildings. Once up on one of the buildings, I then want to make sure I am facing the Temple of the One in the centre of the district and just make a bridge towards it with my paintbrushes. And once we are close enough, I just want to jump towards the temple, and if I am high enough, I will phase right through the temple, but not actually be inside the temple, so to speak. Now, once I'm inside the temple, you'd think there wouldn't be a lot to do other than be stuck, but you would be wrong. See, what, what you want to do is come over to where the door would normally be to get in and out of the temple, and you will notice you can see right through it. But if you turn around, you will then see a part of the door phase through the floor, and all you have to do is open it, and voila! You'll notice that we are actually inside the temple proper now, but there's this odd red lighting effect over everything. And well, if you go outside, you will see this is because the Dramor have invaded, and once we walk around to a certain point, I will get a quest notification for the Light the Dragonfires quest, and as soon as I accept it, the sky will turn red. This is all happening because what I have just done is a glitch that transports you to a version of the Imperial City that is used during the final mission of the game when Merence Dagon arrives. So yes, that's right, I have just skipped the fight with Cameron and any other encounters in the game. All I have to do now is go back inside the temple and then wait for Martin to arrive. Obviously if I was doing this normally, he would be right behind me, but as you can see, he is still in Cloud Ruler Temple waiting for me to head through the portal to Paradise. So I wait 11 hours and then he appears and the final cutscene of the game plays, and with that, the main story is over, and I didn't really beat Oblivion without attacking anyone. While I never did attack anyone, or kill anything for that matter, I don't really know if this counts as me beating the game as I used a glitch to achieve it and could have technically done this as soon as I got out of the prison at the beginning of the game. So I'm going to leave that to all of you to decide whether this counts or not. If it wasn't clear already, I would not recommend doing this. I wanted to give up so many times in the Sancrator section alone, let alone the fight with Cameron as it became incredibly tedious in those segments especially. With all that being said, that's going to be the end of this challenge run video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel and sharing the video as this really does help me out a lot and I will let you know when I upload my next challenge run video. My name's Nervit and I'll see you all later.